Well, it's good everybody. Pete here at Spawn Fly Fish and I know it's hot outside. The water's low, it's kind of tough fishing. So let's cool off, start thinking about some future fishing. And by that, I mean coho. Grab your stuff, we're gonna have some fun on the vise today. All right, so in the vise today, we've got the SA254 from A-Rex. This is a sick hook. Look at the hook app on this thing, huge. But the beauty is how strong this hook is. So for the bead, got a 7.5 millimeter bead there from Spawn. This is one of our football beads in the hot pink. Can't go wrong. So now I've just got some .015 non-lead wire. And I'm, I'm just gonna get about 10 wraps, maybe 12 on here. You know, a, a fly this size, this isn't going to do anything as far as adding sub, uh, substantial weight by any means. However, it's going to help me position that bead and lock it into place. So, just trim both the front and rear cut. Roll that over with your scissors and you won't shred that thread when you start tying. Alright, just jam that into the back like so. We're ready to get started. And so, for the thread today, let me get some of this. I've got loose rabbit falling all over the place, so bear with me. But for the thread, I've got some Vivas 140, and this is their fluorescent hot pink. So, what we're tying today. I already, already kind of teased you a little bit, talking about some coho. I just want you guys to all take a break from the heat and monotony and humidity and whatever you're dealing with, and look forward to some fun fall fishing, especially if you have access to salmon and steelhead. But what we're gonna do today is kind of tie an adulterated version of a simple bunny leech. Last year, this was one of my favorite color schemes and it's gonna involve some blues and pinks and all that good stuff. But like any good bunny leech, we need a nice tail. So for the tail today, as you can see, I've got some tiger barred magnum rabbit and this is from hairline and this one is hot pink black over white and as you can see I've, I've got the hairs all flowing toward the back and so when I cut that leather I'm mindful not to cut the hairs and that's going to give me this nice flow off the back of that that leather or that hide and then where I'm going to tie in of course get rid of all that hair now if you're new to rabbit I'm going to show you the secret this is a little container of water so i'm just going to dip my finger in there and if these these hairs start to get unruly i'm just going to run that through my wet fingers and now they're under control so as you can see i've measured this so that where that hair is trimmed off this is just slightly longer than one hook length and that's perfect for what we're trying to do i'm going to tie this and keep in mind, you're on a jig hook here. Let me get this started. What I do want is to make sure this rides like this so that it's in line with the hook shank. I don't want it off to one side or the other. And so once I've solidified that, I'm really going to put some pressure on these, these next series of thread wraps here. I don't want that leather shifting, moving, sliding, any of that. And there we go. It is not going to move at all. All right, nothing crazy so far. As you can see, that's gonna have a nice drop off the back of this jig hook and that movement along with that coloration. Woo, good luck finding a coho that says no to that. All right, so at this point, in a typical bunny leech, you'd come in and throw a little flash. We're gonna do it a little differently. At this point, let's get some body going. So now we're switching over to cross-cut rabbit. And this is two-toned rabbit, blue, white. So again, for those of you who are new to rabbit, this is my left hand. When I place the rabbit in my left hand so that the leather is facing outward or up, all these fibers should flow toward my thumb. If they do, that's the proper orientation for tying in this rabbit. 
Again, I'm going to go over to my water, get my fingers wet, and I'm going to pull this strip through my fingers. And I've already cleaned this one, but you see I'll still get a couple fibers out of there. But the main thing is I'm in control of this rabbit now. It's not going to fly all over and get onto every little thing that uh, is possible inside of your tying room or wherever you might be twisting up some bugs. Rabbit hair gets everywhere. All right, so there we've trimmed the, the fur off of the tip and I'm going to place this down so that again the leather is looking at me. It's looking up and that's because when we start to wrap this it will force the hairs to all come off around the shank and not against the shank. Be a, a really ineffective bug if you go the wrong way so just pay in mind and, and be attentive to that. All right at this point I'll kick these fibers out so now again before you start wrapping hold your your little strip of rabbit here cross cut up and if you don't have hairs going toward the back it's not tied in properly all right so now wrapping the leather against the shank as this comes around you'll see leather to the shank I'm just gonna gently start coaxing these rabbit fibers toward the back with each wrap nothing to it and you can see this is going to fill up pretty quickly. And bunny leeches, any, any flies tied with rabbit pretty much, are so effective if, if you haven't fished them or tied them. By all means, get some rabbit, get some hooks, tie some. All right, here I've made a very clean V in that hair. Again, because my fingers are wet, I can kind of just guide those hairs and they'll stay where I want them for uh, you know a few seconds till they dry and all that and it lets me do my work and be as tidy as possible and I'm a fan of clean flies and this is just one way to get that done all right tied our rabbit off get in there and as cleanly as you can cut that strip out sometimes it's a little gnarly so there's nothing that replaces experience when you're you're working on these materials and I know it's not a, a fun thing to hear but it's the truth all right so let's look at this guy the way it's going to be in the water now I like the look of this so now we've got some really nice contrast between the tail and the body so again this tail is gonna have a bunch of movement especially once it's saturated in the water it's gonna kick side to side just slightly the fibers or hairs are going to wave and move nice and then you get into the body which is just all flow so this just looks like a meal that they can't say no to so now let's get some flash in there so that no matter the conditions we know they're going to see it and if you look closely I've got two colors in here this is crystal flash one color is light blue and the other is fluorescent cerise and I've got roughly seven, eight fibers of each color. I'm not gonna spin them, mix them, twist them, any of that. They're just together. I'm going to veil them or fold them over the thread itself and then simply bring the thread to the shank. Couple wraps and then a couple to really crank this down. And all I'm gonna do is make sure that it's on top of that hook shank. And if it is, I'm gonna go ahead and just spread it down with one finger making sure I've got roughly half of the strands on one side of the hook and half on the other like so and I, at this point I can go ahead and trim I'm not going to wait because we have some other elements here what I do want to do is kind of give this an angle so that I don't have all of these fibers ending in one spot and then I'll switch up that angle and there we go we got full coverage lots of flash for extra visibility Alright, so let's finish tying down all of our flash. There we go. And next, we are going to kind of reconnect the front of the fly now with the tail. And what I mean by that is the same color. And so for this, I've got some standard Blood Quill Marabou from Hairline. And this is their fluorescent uh, Cerise. So we're going to match that flash. We're going to have a similar tone of pinks in the tail and in, the, and in this collar. 
Alright, so as you can see, I've already prepped this feather by removing one half of the fibers from one side. And the reason is I don't want to block out all the work that we've put into this body thus far. And if I tied a full marabou feather in here, yeah, it'd be beautiful and it would still catch fish, but it's not going to have the look that I want. And this is why we tie flies for ourselves. It's not just to catch fish. It's also to express ourselves a little bit. And my expression today, I just want a hint of pink. Let that blue kind of show through. So here we go. Just be careful here. It's, it's not a real substantial quill because you did remove some of it, peeling off half those fibers. I'm going to get maybe two, three wraps of this and call it good. The tough part here is not going too crazy and getting too many fibers. Since we have a bowl of water handy, let's utilize that and kind of control these fibers the same way we did with the rabbit. See that? I would have cut out three whole strands of marabou there if I wasn't using that water. All right, I really like that right there. Call it good. And catch that quill. A couple more thread wraps here. And this feather can now be cut out and used for a tail and a different fly, whatever you want to do. All right, so let's get our very last element here, which is a blue mallard feather. This is fluorescent blue from Nature Spirit. So in the same way that we are breaking up the monotony of all the blue white by adding some more pink reconnect we're going to do the same now in front of that uh, marabou with this blue mallard and the finished effect i don't know about you guys but i, I love tying these salmon and steelhead kind of flies and i really like this color scheme and the sort of mottled bait fish uh, look, even though there's no bait fish I've ever seen that's pink and blue like this. I'm just going to turn this slightly, give myself a little cleaner spot to tie this in because I'm getting close to that bead, which is fine. After some really solid thread wraps, go ahead and trim that tag end. And not much of it, so here we go. Got that. All right, so same thing again. I peeled half those fibers because I only want the trailing edge fibers. I don't want full coverage, right? Don't want to break up or just want to break up. We don't want to cover up. All right. And if you simply pay, pay attention to where that quill sits, and if you can get the inside of the quill to face the shank, those fibers are going to hug whatever you previously wrapped as compared to if you get the quill on its side and then you get some fibers that'll stand up away from the center more. So whatever you're looking for, there's probably a way to do it. I'm gonna turn that and catch this quill right behind the bead. And now we've filled up that, that all that space pretty well. And let's trim this quill out. Oh, oh, oh yeah, that's fishy. That's, that's a screaming coho already. A little TLC on some of those fibers and then I'm going to really solidify this thread neck here because these flies I mean if you've never caught a coho they're, they're pretty strong and they're pretty nasty and they don't like that fly in their mouth they're trying to chew on it get rid of it so make your flies as strong as you can all right so oh, I'm trapping one little fiber there, but I think we'll be okay. I'm going to give it a second whip finish now. Again, stronger is better on this one. Now is not the time to shy away. There we go. Like so. That's, that's tough. Boom. Alright, let's finish it off. We've got some Loon Hardhead Clear here. And we're just going to cover all these thread wraps very carefully. We don't want to start drifting into our fibers of those feathers. We took so much effort to make them look nice. Let's leave them looking nice. And just about covered up here. All right, I like the 
gorgeous. Very nice. If I do say so. All right. So there you have it. One with jacked up bunny leech ready for some coho action. And again, keep in mind some contrast there. Let's that let's that fly really be noticed. We've got flash again, just in case they didn't see the contrast. And then all the movement from the rabbit combined with the marabou and that little mallard kick at the end. There's, there's not much more you could do to, to get yourself ready for success. So I hope you guys enjoyed this one. If you did, please smash that, that like and subscribe button. And we will see you guys on the water.